Hey guys, welcome to episode 10 of the How to Code a Spigot plugin for 1.15 series. As requested, I will be going over cooldowns in this episode, and it's not going to be like most of my other episodes. I won't be going over the entire plugin. I will be going only over the cooldowns because I don't want to make this video 30 minutes long. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to show you guys what the plugin, what my plugin will be doing. And I have this string right here that I customize, and whenever I right click, you'll see it puts like a string wall down, but if I right click again, you'll see I got this little ability to be ready in one second. And I uh, added a little bit of a delay, so it has a five second delay, you see? But yeah, uh, cooldowns are pretty easy to add. All we're gonna be doing is creating a hash map and then adding the time of the current time in game to the hash map and then comparing it with the next time they run it. So without further ado, let's get right into it. And uh, like I said, I will be adding the cooldown to this ready-made plugin. Uh, the code for this plugin is in my GitHub in the link be in the description below. So if you want, you can go ahead and grab this entire plugin if you want to test it out and work with, around with it. But if you don't want it to test around this plugin, just go ahead and find one of your plugins and we can add a cooldown to it. You can add cooldowns to GUIs, events like we're doing here or a command. Super simple. The first thing we want to do is create the actual hash map. And a hash map is going to look like this if you don't know what a hash map is. So we're going to put two things in the hash map. We're going to put a string and a long. And we're going to call this hash map cooldowns. Set equal to a new hash map with the same things inside a string and a long. And that right there, once you import it, that is how you create a hash map hash map <laughs> that simple so basically what a hash map is if you don't know um some good example so if i go into the hash map if i say if i say cooldowns dot get and i pass in let's say cmax i pass in cmax what this does is it goes and gets the cmax re reference and then it returns this long it'll return i don't know bunch of numbers so if i when i use cooldowns i get cmax whatever name it'll look for the name inside the hash map and then it'll return the long if this was a player let's say if this was a player and this was an inventory if i looked for the player it will return the inventory id i use hash maps in pretty much all my plugins i i love them they are they make plugins very they make plugins, I guess, customizable. You can do a lot more stuff with plugins when you have hash maps. But yeah, so once you have this hash map created, let's go right to where you want to add that cooldown effect. And uh, you can add this cooldown effect to any plugin, like I said. If you don't want to copy this code, go ahead and find one of your plugins and we can do it there. So right here is where I want to add the cooldown effect. And the first thing I actually want to do is set that cooldown for them. So I'm going to say cooldowns dot put and this is how you put stuff into a hash map instead of with a lore with a a list a list you do add but with a hash map we're to say put and the key that we're going to put in there is the player's name player dot get name and the value i want to put in there is the system dot get dot current time in milliseconds and now there's a few ways we can go about this. Uh, you can keep the time in milliseconds you can, or you can put it in seconds. So I'm gonna keep the time in milliseconds and I wanna add a five second delay to this. So what I'm gonna do is do plus five times a thousand. And the reason why I'm doing this is because there's 1000 milliseconds in a second. So if I wanna make this 10 seconds, 10 times a thousand, nine seconds, nine times a thousand, I know it's 9,000, but it's be easier when you're editing your code later on. So I want a five second delay. And right here, so this time right here will still be in milliseconds. If if you wanted to put this in seconds, if you wanted to save it in seconds, you can go ahead and divide that by a thousand and then just add five. That will add five seconds. And then we're converting this to seconds. You can do it that way. Either way works. Uh, I keep it in milliseconds because I think it's a little more accurate. But once you have that added to it, we can go ahead and before we need to check if they actually have cooldown. 
So if cooldowns dot contains key, and the key is player dot get name, this right here means that they're they actually have a name in the hash map. They have some value in the hash map. It doesn't mean they actually have a cooldown. It just means there's value of them in the hash map. So we need to check, say, we'll say player is inside hash map, but now we need to check if they actually have a cooldown. So we can say if cooldowns dot get player dot get name is greater than system dot current time milliseconds. This means they still have time left in the cooldown. So if the time from the hash map is greater than the time, the current time in milliseconds, that means they still have time left. If they if their time is five and the current time in milliseconds is four, that means they still have one second left or something like that. So what do you want to do if they still have time left? And that is really up to you guys. I'm just going to return and I'll send them a message saying, hey, you still have blank seconds left. And to do this, I'm going to create a long, say time left, set it equal to cooldowns. So I get player I get name. I'm then going to minus that from the system dot get current time milliseconds. And then I'm going to divide that by a thousand to convert two seconds. Yeah, it's really, this could be an int, doesn't really matter. Oh, yes, never mind. I'm wrong. It has to be long. Next, I'm going to say player.send message. And check color.gold. Build to be ready in time left. All right, and just like that, we created a cooldown, and that's that's it. And that's all you have to do. Um, like I said, it's really easy to add a cooldown using hash maps. There is another way using a runnable where you can run it through like every second and keep checking. Um, I think this way is a little better. But uh, just go back through it real quick. We created a hash map up here with a string and a long. Down here, the first thing I recommend you guys doing is actually adding that time to the cooldown. And you do that after, of course, to check. So we're gonna put that player name into the hash map and then put the time in current milliseconds into there. And then before that, we need to check. So we're checking that the player is in the hash map and then we're checking to see if their time is greater than the time current milliseconds. That means they still have time left. And then we kick them out if they have time left. If they don't have time left, they'll just go right out of that if statement, add the new time to it, and they'll do whatever we want it to do. And this plugin is pretty cool if you guys want to check it out on the GitHub. It does add that cool cobweb effect to it. But uh, yeah, that is really it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I hope you guys make do of this cooldown. Adding cooldowns to commands really does help, especially if your command does a lot of stuff and players can't abuse commands and make lag on your server. So adding cooldowns is a great thing. And you know, like I said, you can add this to anything in Spigot, add it to commands, to events, to GUIs, to anything you like. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next episode. Bye.